Three tips on how to use photo props. Props in photos can end up absolutely ruining the image if they're not used right. For a great photo, you want the props to add to, not take away from, the story you are telling about your subject. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use props to enhance your storytelling in photos. I'll give you my three biggest tips to decide if and when you should use props and when to just walk away from them. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional boudoir photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I've been doing this since 2010, teaching since 2012, and I love telling stories. That's what I do with my photography. It's about so much more than taking sexy photos. And I think props are a great way to really personalize the photo shoot experience with each client because everyone who walks through my door and yours is different from everybody else. And these little personalized touches using props are great ways to really make each photo shoot unique. Plus, I like the challenge of using props in shoots because it allows me to make every single shoot a little bit different. That way I'm not just doing the same things over and over and over again. Now, I'm not gonna touch on things like angel wings or any of the other, dare I say, cliched uh, trends that we've been seeing in the boudoir space in the last couple of years. You can take these same principles and apply it to those, but I'm gonna give you examples of some other things that you can use and just new ways to look at props. So let's dive in. All right, so of my three big tips. So the first one, props must add to the story. Number two, they cannot take away from the story. And number three, don't force it. All right, so let's go through a handful of my images here and we'll talk about the ways the props add to the story and how to know if they take away. Okay, so in this image here, she brought some fun toys to her session, particularly this flogger right here. And we tried different ways to use this, whether her hand was just down at her side or hand on her hip you know, elbow here with the thing resting down. That looked pretty cool also, but I found just over the shoulder really accentuated her curves for one, because you have the contrast from the vertical lines here in this fabric with the shape of her body, and that worked really nicely. Now, I also tried it on this side in the shadow and didn't like it as much because it wasn't, as prominent in the photo. That being said, props do not need to be front and center in the photos. They need to enhance the photo, not take away from it. Also, if she was wearing everything dark, then this light colored fabric or leather here would absolutely stand out and it could take away from the rest of the photo. So we found this pose to be a really good balance of incorporating the flogger into the image without it looking forced. Because again, that's number three, do not force it. If you're having to work really, really hard to get a prop to work in your series, it might be better just to put the thing down, do the series without the prop, and maybe come back to it with a different outfit or just don't use it at all. All right, so this might be one of my most well-known images and it's certainly an attention grabber because you don't see boudoir photos like this. She is a librarian, so I wanted to figure out a way to work books into the session. Normally what I would do is have somebody sitting there reading a book, maybe glancing over at the camera as they're holding the book in their hand or maybe holding the book to their chest, even just down on the bed beside them or on a chair anywhere. They don't have to actually be reading the book for it to be a part of the scene. But in this one, I wanted to do something a little bit different because she's a cosplayer also. She goes to Comic-Con, all the big events like that, dresses up as all these different characters from various things. So she loves Harry Potter and books. And I thought this could be a really cool way to show those things. So we've got the Harry Potter wand and we've got all the books floating around here. And this was a composite image. It was one of those, like I had the vision in my brain and we set up the shoot to do this image as part of her entire experience. This was just one image out of the regular shoot. But I shot easily three to four times this number of books. And what I did was just held the books up in a way that kept my hand from overlapping part of the book. You know, for example, holding this tea up, I can put my hands in the back like this so you can see the entire mug. 
as opposed to my fingers around it, where now I would have to Photoshop my fingers out of it. Anywho, so we did that, took a ton of photos, books in different positions, forward and back from the camera to get them in different parts of the, the focal plane here. And then I just chose which ones I wanted, layered everything together in a composite. But I didn't know how many books I really wanted. I didn't know if three was gonna be right or if 30 was gonna be right. So I took a ton of photos, all different books in different positions, and then I just started adding them to the scene until it felt too crowded. I wanted to create depth and movement around her without it looking like she's in a whirlwind of books where she's no longer the focus of the image. Because it's important that her reading this spell book with the wand is the focus of the image. The books around her enhance that. Too many books would take away from her. I also tried adding these little like sparks and lightning bolts to the magic wand, obviously better than these red streaks I'm doing right now, but I thought that could be a fun way to enhance it. Well then I'm like, well, I don't know. Then I gotta add the color cast to her face here and to her hand because now there's blue light coming off of the wand, but there's white light on her and it just got to be too complicated and Again, that took away from her because now the focus is the wand with all the little lightning bolts and the floating books and we lose our main subject, which is the person casting the spell. So I ended up scrubbing that. So again, this is another example of a time when I didn't know how much was too much, but once I started to play with it, I realized I had to dial things back so that all of these elements added to the story without taking away from the most important thing, and I had to be comfortable walking away at some point. Here is another one. One of my clients here races motocross bikes, which is super cool. So I had her bring in some of her riding gear, and I love juxtaposition. So she would obviously never ride a dirt bike in this dress, but I thought it would be a fun way to play. The colors worked, and instead of heels, we put her in these riding boots, and I don't need her holding the helmet or holding it out in front of her or wearing the helmet even. It just needs to be in the scene. So I did a pose like I would normally put her in in a dress and heels and just had her place that hand that you can't see here uh, on top of the helmet like that. So she's interacting with it, but it's, it's just a passive part of the scene. It's not the focus. The focus of the scene is her. And then there happens to be, you know, the riding boots and the helmet to help tell her story, which was pretty fun. So again, I had to make sure that the props added to the story, they add some spice to the photo, they don't take away from the main focus, and if just the boots worked, then I would have taken the helmet out of there. You know, if maybe the helmet was black, and like a matte black, and it would have been really hard to light the helmet specifically without light spilling onto her or the stool or whatever, I had to be okay with not incorporating that. We didn't use the rest of her riding gear. We didn't do any of the other stuff. It was just the boots and the helmet with the cocktail dress. All right, here is another one of my favorite props. It's uh, a guitar that I have here in the studio. And whenever one of my clients comes in who either loves music or their partner likes music, this is a fun way that we can incorporate that. And what's cool about these guitars is you have the curve of the body of the guitar, which matches the curve of the feminine form. So it's a great way to still achieve those sexy boudoir lines without just showing your client's body. They can be behind it like this. She doesn't have to be holding it in a G major chord. She can just be with the guitar and that's all we need to tell this story. You know, I've done other ones where my clients actually do play. Uh, someone brought a cello in and she sat there and played the cello and the acoustics in this studio, fantastic for some live cello. I just wanted to listen to her play all evening. But the idea is we can get them actually playing, but if she doesn't play guitar, it's gonna look super forced to have her trying to, you know, just hold her hand up on the neck of the guitar. I've done other photos where my client is sitting on the amp, holding the guitar in her lap. She's got one arm resting on it, the other one is just hanging down. Because again, she didn't play guitar, so I'm not gonna have her try to force a chord 
her hand can just be down and looking away and that looks very fashion which is on brand for me so the outfit doesn't really matter she went topless here and we just had her hair over her chest uh, but again, it's not about any of that in particularly. It's about her with the guitar and the subtlety that you can create by adding props. Obviously, the guitar is front and center here, but she's not playing it. It's not forced. It's not in your face. It is a comfortable part of the scene that doesn't take away from the highlight of the person behind it. So that is how we work that in. So hopefully you learn a bit here about how to use props in photos. It needs to add to the story. It cannot take away from the main subject because as soon as the prop becomes the focus, your client is no longer the main subject which can be fine, but generally you want your clients to be the subject. And you have to know when it's too much work to try to force it, and you should just walk away. So get out there, play with some props, and let me know how it goes. And if you wanna know more about lighting and posing with this stuff, you can head to boudoirguild.com. I have lighting and posing courses there. Also some other killer videos on this channel. So be sure to subscribe so you can check out every new video I do on posing, lighting, and making magic like this. You are amazing. See you inside.